Hey guys, Game Chief here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to add mods to your Daisy standalone server. Today we'll be setting up mods to work with the Daisy standalone launcher, and we'll be installing Community Framework along with Community Online Tools. This video is broken up into four different parts, and timestamps are on the screen now. Alright, first off, for some prereqs. Before I begin, I just want to state that I am starting off where I left on the last Daisy video, so if you're confused, I highly recommend you watch that one first. Link in the description and on the right hand side of your screen now. So for the prereqs, I'll cover these quickly and you should already have all of these from my first video. If you do not have these or are confused, watch the other video, link in the description. Uh, this guide is focused on setting up a dedicated server. It's not required to be like a dedicated one on a dedicated machine. However, it is a recommendation instead of setting it up on your own machine. Uh, two is to have a working Daisy server on the Daisy standalone launcher. You can check the old video on how to do that. Three is to have the Daisy standalone launcher installed on your computer. Four is to have a basic text editor such as Notepad++. And five is to have the .NET Framework 4.7 installed. So let's go ahead and get started getting the Daisy standalone launcher mod download server set up. So I'm going to go and remote into the server that I have. And I'm going to go ahead and go to daisysalauncher.com. I'm going to go ahead and click on Tools, and it's going to bring up this page. And then we're going to go ahead and click Download. We're going to go ahead and open up the zip folder. Go ahead and minimize that. And we're going to navigate to our server. And then we're going to drag and drop the exe. Next, we're gonna to need to edit our start.bat file, so I'm gonna go ahead and open that notepad. Then I'm gonna need to scroll down a bit to where the server would be starting. So it's right here. This would normally call just to start the regular Daisy server exe. However, in this case, we do not wanna do that. So we're gonna go back here, and we'll see that it's the Daisy standalone mod launcher. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna replace that exe. And now that exe has been replaced, there are, you still have your normal parameters here and you're not going to change these and then if you want to add in some mods you'd go add mod in here say in this case you want to add community framework we'd go ahead and put that there and then also say we want to add another mod there's also this ignore mod parameter so if you want to make a mod server side only and not have to have all clients download it you can go ahead and do that but in our case we're just going to go ahead and re we'll remove this mod line then we're going to want to go ahead and scroll up a bit and then in our bat file we do have a kill server set up here so we're going to want to go ahead and copy this that way if this ever gets run it'll also kill the mod server which it should and then we'll go ahead and save this and then we can launch our server from our bat file and now that everything's loaded up you can see you do have this extra box here so this is the mod server uh, so it starts a web server on a port plus 10 of your game port. So in this case, my game port is 2302. So it uses port 2312. So whatever your game port is, just add 10 to it. And then this port does have to be forwarded. So make sure you do forward this port. And then it's going to go ahead and start the Daisy server using your normal parameters. And then if you navigate to a web browser, type the IP in and then that port. What it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and list all the mods that you have on the server so the client will know what mods needs to run and what it needs to download. In this case, we haven't set up any mods yet, but we know that the server is working as intended. Next, we're gonna be adding the community framework mod. This mod is required by a lot of other mods on the workshop, including the community online tools. So we're gonna go ahead and get started setting this up. So we're gonna go ahead and subscribe to this add-on and that's gonna go ahead and add it. And then you're gonna open your Steam client and that should go ahead and download it. So next we're gonna go ahead and go into our file explorer and then go to where Daisy is installed. In that case, it's gonna be on my, this SSD. All right, and then we're gonna go into the workshop folder. This is a hidden folder, so if you can't see it, you need to go to view and make sure that hidden items are shown. And then we're gonna find the at CF add-on. And now that we found the at CF add on, I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to use 7-zip to archive this. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy it. 
And I'm going to go ahead and copy it over to my server. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and drag and drop it into the root directory. Next, I'm going to go ahead and go into the at CF folder, go into the keys folder, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this by key. So this is basically a signature key that lets the server know that, hey, this add-on is okay to be running. So you need to copy this over to your keys folder, and then that way people will be able to join. And then we can go back into CF, and we can just delete this folder. Next, we're going to go ahead and edit our start server.bat again. We're going to go down to where it launches the server. And then we're going to go ahead and add on to this at the end here. And we're going to go ahead and add on to mod at CF. We'll go ahead and save this, minimize it, and then launch the server. And then now the server's launched, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And I'm going to go ahead and open the Daisy standalone launcher. We're just going to download the server list and then filter for my server. And then as you can see, it doesn't have the mod listed yet. That's because it'll take a couple minutes for the list to refresh. So we just got to wait here for a couple minutes until we see an update here. And then after sitting for a few minutes, you can see that the uh, mod server did get a client and then lost the client, which means that the server list has been updated, which means the mod should be listed there now. So if we go to minimize this, open launcher again. And then if we go to our server, you can see that the CF add-on is now showing up there. Next, we're going to want to go ahead and add the Community Online Tools mod. So we're going to go ahead and subscribe to this item on the workshop. And then if we could look at Steam, we'll see that I downloaded it. We're going to go ahead and go back into our DAISY directory in the workshop. And if we refresh, we should see Community Online Tools. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click on this. And again, I'm going to turn it into a 7-zip archive. And I'm going to go ahead and click on it, copy it, go back to my machine, and paste it over. Again, I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and drag and drop it here. Close that. And then normally you would want to go into the keys folder and copy this key into your keys folder here. So that way the server knows that people are allowed to join. However, we already have this key because community online tools and CF are made by the same person. So we can go in here, and we can just delete that. Next, we're going to want to go ahead and click on this, and we want to rename it. And we're going to get rid of the dashes, just because it makes it a bit simpler later on. And we're going to go ahead and go into our start server file. And then we're going to go ahead and edit our mod parameter to add a semicolon here, so it knows we're adding another mod. And then go ahead and save that, and we can close out of this. Next, we're going to go to our profile folder. So in my case, this, I named it server name. And we're going to create two folders. So we'll create one, and we're going to call this one community online tools. And the next one, we're going to call permissions framework. Next, we're going to go inside of the community online tools folder and create two more folders, one named item sets and another one named vehicles. Next, we're gonna go back a folder and go into the permissions framework folder. And we're gonna go ahead and create three different folders. So we're gonna go and create permissions, players, and roles. And then inside the permissions folder, we're going to need to create a new file. But first, we're going to need to know your Steam player ID. In this case, we're going to pull up mine. And this is my Steam player ID, so I'm going to copy this. Then we're going to go New, Text Document, and paste that in. So it's going to be just a text document with just your player ID. Next, we're going to go and open this text file. And then there's going to be a paste bin in the description. I'm going to scroll down here, control A to highlight all, control C to copy, paste that all in there, save the file, and then close it. And then we're going to go ahead and go back, 
go into players. Next, we're going to go ahead and open Notepad++, and we're going to create a new file. And we're going to go ahead and go to the link in the description again. And we're going to go ahead and control A, control C, and control V to paste this. And then right here, you're going to need to enter your GUID. If you've been following along, you would have already entered it in Beck. So this is my GUID, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then paste that right there. And then you also want to get your player ID, your Steam player ID. Paste that there. And then we're going to go ahead and save this. And we're going to go ahead and go back to our daisy folder, server name, permissions framework, players, and we're going to make sure this is on all types. And you're going to paste your player ID in, dot JSON, and then hit save. And then we can go ahead and close out of that. And we can go back to players and see that the JSON file was created. And we're going to go back to our main directory of daisy and we're going to go ahead and launch our server. And then after waiting a few minutes, we can go ahead and see that the server's launched and it has gotten that client, which means the server list is updated. So we can go ahead and tap out of here and we can go open the daisy launcher again. We'll find our server, which now has CF and community online tools. So we'll go ahead and hit play. And this is what people will see if they don't already have the mods. So it's just going to say that those are missing. You'll, they'll press OK. And then it'll take a moment, and then Steam is going to go ahead and download those. And then if they go back, hit play again, it'll ask for a password if there is one. And then they'll go ahead and load in. And now that we're in game, we can go and activate COT. And this can be done by pressing the N key on your keyboard. And it'll go ahead and tell you that it's been toggled on. We can press insert to go into this free cam right here. And then whenever you press insert again, it'll go ahead and take you out of that. And then we can press Y to open the menu. And there's a bunch of different stuff you can do here, weather, time of day. So I can go ahead and change that to day. And then while you're in free cam, you can just go around and press H to teleport to where your cursor's at. Or you can just press H in general to teleport. So if I want to teleport all the way over there, just pressing H while the tools are on, we'll do that. Go into player management, and select a player, turn god mode on. And there's a lot of different options you can do. I just recommend looking through here. And if you don't want to accidentally do something, you can always press end to turn that off. So those keys will no longer work. And if you try to use those keys, it'll also tell you that it's turned off. And that's the end of the video. Uh, there is going to be a couple more videos coming out. Uh, one's going to be about a lot of people have said that they are making their server locally, even though it's not the focus of the server. I'm going to go ahead and have a video coming out soon about some issues that people may run into and how to fix that. Um, and there may be a couple other videos after that. And that's about it. Um, if you have any issues, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. And that's about it. See you later.